Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Scottish thistles and I'm going to be sipping on some peach tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you can find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, green oxide, burnt umber, which I will call brown, Mars black, deep yellow, and fire red. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush and a number four round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same brushes and paint and a whole bunch of other little things that'll help you along with it. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are painting our sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are brown, blue, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have it dark at the top and fade its way down to a very light pale blue at the bottom. I'll be using a left to right kind of a crisscross type of brush stroke. And that way, as I go through the process, I'll have a, a gradient that happens down as I come down and it'll all look like it blends nicely together. So I'm gonna start with blue, brown, and a touch of white on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna start up at the top just using my left to right kind of crisscross type of motion. When I go to pick up paint again, I will be picking up blue and white. I'm not gonna pick up any more brown. And this way it's gonna start to transition down into a lighter color as we come down that canvas. Now I'm just picking up white paint. I did not wash my brush. So again, because I'm not washing my brush or because I'm using that dirty brush and just adding a lighter color as I'm coming down my canvas, we're gonna get a natural gradient that's gonna come down. And you'll see as I go through this process, I do tend to go back up into my previous section as I am painting, just to make sure that I get them to really talk well together. And as I'm coming down the canvas, I do tend to kind of push my brush a little bit hard into the canvas, which allows me to kind of release all of those colors that are within the bristles. And that's a great way to kind of expend the, the, the colors that are within there gradually as you go down that sky. So just a little tip to getting those colors off of your brush and allowing for that gradient to just naturally happen as you're coming down the canvas. And I just kind of keep going. You can see I just, you know, back myself into the previous, the previous section. But right now I am just picking up white paint and allowing for the colors from that original time when I picked up the blue and the brown, letting those work their way out of my brush. But I still can see the evidence of them on the canvas because I they were really dark and I had quite a bit on my brush. So as I'm going through this process, they're still evident in my paint. I don't want the bottom of my canvas to go all the way 100% white, so I am allowing for it to remain a little bit light blue. So if yours 
has gone all the way white on you down at the bottom, you could certainly pick up a little bit more brown or a little bit more blue just so it has a tinge or a tint of a color in it. And then you can certainly keep tweaking this all you want, but we will be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your sky done and you've made any little modifications that you want, you can wash and dry this large brush, as of course I'm gonna just kind of keep <laughs> tweaking mine as it dries, wash and dry this uh, large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the out of focus foliage that's gonna be at the bottom portion of our canvas, which will give our painting a lot of dimension. I'm gonna be using my large brush, but I do wanna kind of forewarn you before you start this step that you make sure that your sky is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to dry it if you'd like to, or you can do as I did and just whip out your blow dryer and get it dry that way. So how I'm gonna be doing this, I'm gonna be doing most of it with a scrubbing type of technique that will allow me to have really soft and muted edges to it. I'm gonna have a, what's gonna to appear to be maybe trees or bushes over in this area, and then I'm gonna have maybe some tall, out of focus, maybe grass or something that might be a little bit closer to us visually over on this side, which I'll be using my rubbing, but I might also use a little bit of stippling or dotting type of technique. I want on all of this foliage, I want the edges to be really soft and out of focus and muted. And then as I go down towards the bottom of my canvas, especially on this side, I'm gonna have this really dark, like we're seeing, you know, the, the deep darkness of whatever this area of foliage is. So I'm gonna actually get it to go really dark and maybe with some green and black down at the bottom, but I'll show you how I'm gonna to get to it. The colors I'm using are yellow, green, white, brown, and black. And I'm gonna start my edges of all of these um, out of focus stuff first. And I'm gonna use green, yellow, brown, and white on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna be rubbing it in the edges, which will make it nice and soft. So very little bit of paint. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of brown and I will alternate these colors as I go through this process. But first, I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of brown, a tiny bit, I mean, and I'm just picking up a tiny, tiny bit, a tiny bit of yellow and a tiny bit of white. And to make sure that I don't have too much paint on my brush, I'm gonna just give it a dab in my paper towel. So I'm gonna have this kind of coming up in through this area. Maybe I've got it kind of skirting out over in through here. So I'm really, I'm reloading my brush now with those four colors yet again, but very little bit. Wipe it off on my paper towel. Maybe, so this time it ended up looking a little bit more brown. So wow, that's fantastic. I'm gonna move it down in through here, but because I'm using that white, on it, I can really get these to look really soft and muted and out of focus. Maybe this time I pick up uh, green, yellow, and white. I drop the brown for a minute here, get this to be a little bit of a different tone as it's coming over in through here, just really softening those edges. And I'm really just doing the edges right now. I'll get to the interior in a minute. Just picked up a little bit of green and white just to get this down in through here. I'm gonna do a little bit over in through here. So maybe I got my brown. I'm gonna just go all four colors again, brown, green, yellow, and white. And I think I want this to look more like it's of a, like a, piece of grass stalk type thing. So I'm gonna just bring this up more in a upward direction. I think I'm gonna have that pretty close to the top of my canvas. Bring it a little bit down in through here. And you can see I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot, just really rubbing in the illusion of some out of focus stuff in the background. I'm gonna start moving into the interior and I want it to be of a deeper, richer color. So I'm gonna, without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up some green and yellow, no white this time. And I'm gonna start to get these little bit 
of more, in, maybe not in focus, but definitely a little bit more vibrant of a color as it's coming towards the viewer. So this way it's gonna end up looking like it's coming in to focus as we um, come down to the bottom, but it doesn't need to totally go in focus, but we're getting those colors to make them look like they're coming towards us. So green and brown is what I'm picking up right now. And again, I'm just kind of giving myself the illusion of some out of focus little background grass or bushes, something like this. Now I'm picking up black and green as I'm moving my way down towards the bottom of this section. I'm gonna get my canvas here so I can maneuver this all the way over here. And I'm just using like a scrubbing type of technique. You might find that you wanna use dots or a different style of um, brush stroke. But for me, this really helps me to give it that out of focus look to it. You could even dip your brush a tiny bit in water if you wanted to. That would allow you to get those really soft edges as well. I just put a little bit of white on my brush and I had black on my brush, so it ended up a little gray in through there. And I'm just gonna kind of keep manipulating this. This is definitely one of those steps that I would recommend once you feel like you might be done, let it dry, step away from it, look at it from a distance, and that's gonna help you to see if you in fact did get enough on there, if you you know got it as out of focus as you want it to be, or if you wanted to do any more to it, but it's really just meant to give you the illusion of stuff that's out of focus in the background. I'm gonna, over on this side, I'm putting a little bit of brown and yellow on my brush, and I'm gonna kind of dot up some more in focus type of little speckles on these ones. And again, if you feel like you, you did too much, well, I think I want one maybe up in through here too. If you feel like you did too much, you can certainly mute it down with a bit of water on your brush and that will help to kind of get it softer looking and make it look a little bit more out of focus. And we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your out of focus foliage in here. You can certainly tweak it and manipulate it as much as you want to. You can add to it, you can subtract from it, whatever works for you. And then we will be um, utilizing our small brush so you can put your large brush away wherever you'd like to. Take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer for our thistle flowers. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using just black paint. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to place my stems in the arrangement that I want and then I'll put the flower heads on them. I'm gonna have mine pretty much in the center and upwards of my canvas. So I'm gonna have most of my flower heads at about this height or higher and these stems are pretty tall they don't have to be super straight they've got a little bit of bend to them and they can kind of lean in and out either way um, so I'm going to be loading my brush with black paint I'm going to have a few over on this side I'll have one almost in the center and then a cluster over there but again these are flowers you can really form them in whatever formation that you would like so i'm going to have my first one somewhere in through here so if this is about the center of my canvas i'm a almost you know maybe a third over from the left side of my canvas and i'm going to just kind of add this one in through here and i'm going to be using a little bit of water in my paint so that way i have a pretty fluid type of brush stroke, but I know that we're going to be adding um, highlights and stuff onto these flowers later, uh, onto the stem, so you don't have to get them perfectly executed. I'm gonna have two over in through here, so I'm gonna have, this one's gonna go way up into the height of my canvas, something like this, and then maybe as I come down in through here, I'll give it a little bit of a bend. These stems, you don't have to even get them terribly wider as they come down towards the ground. I suppose you could get them a little bit wider, but they don't have to be super duper wide. I'm gonna have this one coming somewhere over in through here and maybe sitting right next to that one. And again, yours can be 
wherever you want. I, I'm going with this formation because this was, um, this is actually off of a picture that I took while I was in Scotland years ago. And these, these, they have all different varieties of thistles, but that I believe is their national flower. So they really were captivating when you got to see them up close and they're just super cool. Um, so this was the formation of the flowers in my photograph. So that's why they landed here on the painting. So my next one, I'm going to have this one pretty big. I think I want it a little bit over to the right from the center of my canvas. So maybe somewhere in through here and then maybe just giving it just a little bit of a bend as it comes down and meets that that ground. I'm bringing them all the way to the bottom of my canvas, but you could certainly bring yours wherever you'd like. I think I'm going to have this one maybe coming in somewhere in through here. And I'm trying to not have each one of them exactly the same. So I'm trying to utilize a little bit of diversity when it comes to the direction that they're coming off. Maybe some of them are going to be really close to together. Maybe some will be a little bit further apart. So, or the stems are a little bit skinnier than the one next to it. So you can certainly have some diversity. I've got this little cluster of them coming over in through here. So maybe this one comes down like this. And again, you know, I'm, I'm being inspired by the photo that I took, but I am definitely, you know, expressing some creative liberty when it comes to putting them exactly where they were in the original photo. That would just be sometimes um, a little bit too nightmarish if you try and get things uh, perfectly executed as if you saw them in that photograph. So we're using a little bit of um, freedom and liberty when it comes to, to adding these. And then I'm going to just kind of get this one over in through here. And then for the heads of the um, flowers, I have little leaves at the bottom. I'm going to demonstrate this one over in, in through here so you can see it kind of close up. How I'm going to start these is I'm going to start it with like a, a U for the base of it and then the top part gets these little, um, I, I, they're almost like little tiny pieces of hair. I don't, I know that that's not the right terminology to use for them, but the little, um, pieces of the flower up at the top. I'm giving them these, just these little um, quick curved type of lines and I'm gonna fill in the entire center with black paint like this. And then when it comes to the leaves, they have these, or petals, they have these petals that come out the bottom of the flower. So they're kind of long and pointy at the end and they can come in different lengths and they can come in different widths so they're kind of, as far as petals go, <laughs> they're pretty chaotic. They don't have a real perfect order to them. Um, so I'm just going to kind of randomly add these different widths. They're coming out in different um, directions. They've got these little points to the end of them, but the more chaotic they, um, they are, it's kind of it makes them look a little bit more natural. So have fun when it comes to adding the petals. And they, they seem to be at the bottom of the flower formation. So the bottom half is kind of where, um, where I've got mine coming out. And I've got them in, you know, different lengths, different thicknesses. They're coming out at different angles. So really it's a it's a fun petal to do because you don't really have to follow a, a distinct formula for it. You can really, you know, have some fun with it, push your brush harder in some spots, let it up on the pressure in other spots. This one over here, I'm going to have this one hanging off the side of my canvas. So I've got, you know, the rest would be over here. And then I'm just going to utilize that black with a little quick, um, flicks to get the tip, the top tips color in that center. And then this one, I'm going to have some really long petals because this one's going to be catching some of that sunshine. And I want it to kind of, um, the sunshine to go through my petals. So I'm going to have some of these really long ones over in through here. Maybe these two are next to each other and just kind of 
almost touching that other flower next to it. This one's going to be pretty wide in through here and then maybe curl up at the end over there. And then I've got this other one that is going... So for me to take this photograph, you're going to see we have a sun in here. I was actually crawled behind this bush of flowers <laughs> to perfectly place that sun going between these petals. So as I'm in this area, I'm like, you got to make those petals perfect because that's where the sun is coming through. <laughs> but so this was a strategic um, photograph on my part to um, get some good composition to the to the painting so it was really fun i kind of felt like a little bug or something as i was trying to get the um the sun to appear between the the petals in a proper in a proper place that was going to add a lot of interest to the painting so it was a whole lot of fun so i'm going to go ahead and get these couple in through here so that's that's looking pretty good to me i think i want a little bit more height on this one over here. I'm just bringing this up just a little bit. Yeah, that works. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for this one. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of a U shape up in through here for the for the flower and then go ahead and flick myself these little tips which are going to be where our sun is going to beam through in a little while but coloring that part in with just black and I'm going to go ahead and do my petals. So I've got these petals coming out pretty darn far on this one. These ones are going to come out I would say maybe somewhere in through here and again using a little bit of water on my brush to give me some fluid motion to, um, to my paint as I'm trying to get these petals to be where I would like them to be placed something like that I've got this one kind of coming down in through here and again I'm just trying to my biggest thing really is trying to get that little pointy tip to um, to show its face on these because that to me was probably the most iconic thing on these petals was that pointy little tip I'm gonna have this one kind of going off my canvas Maybe we'll have a little one in through here and maybe just a couple of small ones coming up in through here. And then I've got these ones. And of course, you could make yours larger or smaller as they go from the left to the right of your canvas. They don't all have to be the same size as mine. You can certainly utilize your own you know, creative visual pleasure as you're as you're creating the, the size of these, but they are kind of rounded on the top. Um, they, they don't necessarily have to look like a total ball. That's why mine are a little bit more in the oval kind of shape. But you could, of course, make yours. There's lots of different varieties of thistles and they come in some really spectacular colors and shapes, but Again, one of the um, things that they have to offer is the, the that prickly kind of top and then these pointy little petals that kind of cascade down um, the bottom portion of it. And you can have little short ones if you want to or long ones for these petals. These ones I think are going to be kind of seen from the side like this. But you can see I'm just, you know, some of them get to be wiggly, some of them get to curl up, so have fun with it. I'm going to go ahead and tackle these ones over here. I've got this smaller one kind of in, in the middle of these ones. It's giving that little fun fluffy kind of top to it, coloring in the inside, and then just giving myself these fun um, petals that are going to just kind of wrap around the bottom of it and just kind of give you that exciting little it almost looks like a, a fun little skirt at the bottom of them so you can you can enjoy that process and then we've got I do have this one in through here that might be a little bit overlapping of the other so we're gonna see how that one plays out it might it might end up getting a little bit too hidden so I'm gonna do the two bigger ones first and then if I if I need to do anything to that small one, but it might end up just getting hidden. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and give myself a couple of these petals down at the bottom. And of course, I am utilizing, again, just black paint, trying to give myself some good um, movement with these little petals. I'm going to do this one over here first because it might end up hiding a lot of the other ones so I can 
do less work if I do this one first and I'm going to have this one kind of coming up and through here and again I'm just kind of keeping that top on the round type of side with these little um, wispy brush strokes to get that texture along the top edge of the flower and then as far as these petals go down in through here yeah this is just going to kind of all merge together we'll 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 get more detail in that when i when i paint the pretty edges of the flowers but we're going to give a couple of little um petals coming out in through here and then i have that one on the top right i'm going to make this one actually a bit taller i want this one to be taller than this one so we can so we can have some good height over here on this right hand side so maybe something like this and then just getting this all to have that little fluffy edge to it and then I just need the the leaves are the petals on this one so again I think I'm going to have this one have some coming way far out on the edges kind of curling up maybe this one goes over over that one and then some nice fun ones coming down in through this direction and again just have fun with them they can be really you know have a lot of character to these little petals down in through here and then maybe just a couple pieces of grass so just um, black paint gonna just kind of fill in some of this bottom area just a little bit we'll add some more dimension to it in a minute but just giving some little pieces of dark grass down at the bottom so we can bring the foreground towards us and maybe just a couple pieces in through here just so we have something in the foreground and it's not just stems at the bottom and then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're going to be doing for the next step is we are going to be finishing our stems and the foreground grass that we just put at the bottom. I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are yellow, white, and green. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to be adding a highlight to each one of these stems on the side of the sun. So we're going to have the sun right in through here, or at least I'm going to have my sun here. You can put your sun wherever you want, but I'm having my sun right here, which means all of the stems to the right of it are going to get a highlight on the left side of the stem, and the stems to the left of the sun will get a highlight on the right side. So I'm going to load my brush with uh, yellow and white, and I will all the time when I do these stem, the highlights on the stems, I'm going to have yellow and white on my brush. And I just continue to have both of those colors so that way I have some light spots and some not so light spots. And when I do this highlight, you don't just have to do it on the actual stem. You can actually overlap it into the sky a little bit and that will give you a brighter highlight. So here we go. I'm going to start on this one over here and I am just painting a line down that right side of that stem and of course it is going to end up brighter in some areas and darker in other areas i'm going to go ahead and i reloaded my brush i'm going to put a highlight down the right side of this stem of course i'm skipping wherever those little petals are and just bringing this bright highlight down the right side of my stem and if you wanted to you could certainly blend it into the stem but I don't really think it's super necessary I'm just giving you a line and it'll it'll speak as a highlight to the viewer so all these ones are going to get it on the left hand side so I'm just going down that left hand side with my yellow and my white and I'm just going to keep up this same process for all of these and it's going to give it a nice uniform kind of look as it's um you know being highlighted by that nice afternoon sunshine and of course you could put more yellow or more white you could really get this to um be as dominant or subtle as you want i like the um kind of the the brightness of it myself but you could certainly if you didn't want yours to be as whoops that one's going a little wild on me if you didn't want yours to be as bright as mine you could certainly back off on on the intensity of it totally up to you and some areas as you're going through you might not even be able to see it because your background 
might be so close in color to whatever that highlight is that you might not be able to see it all the way, which is exactly what would happen in nature. So don't feel as if you can't see it, that it's not correct. And then once I've got that on there, I'm just gonna add some little bits of highlights to these pieces down here. So green, yellow, and white are gonna be my colors on my brush as I do these little pieces in through here. And I'm not doing much. I just want to give you the illusion of some, some pieces of foliage that are closer to us and have a little bit of sunshine being, being cast upon them and twinkling on their edges. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your highlight on your stems and put any little foliage down here with some highlights on it, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our flower tops. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are mostly red, but I'll use a little bit of yellow, and you, I suppose you could use a little bit of white too. Not sure if I'm gonna use white, but I'm gonna, if I do, I'll, I'll let you know. So I'm gonna start with just red paint on my brush. The idea here is that these flower tops are being illuminated by the sun, which is right here. So the part of the flower that is closest to that sun is gonna get the most red or the most illuminated color. So I've got red on my brush right now. Red is gonna be translucent. You're going to see everything that's behind it, especially on the first coat. So what I'm doing is I am adding a bunch to the edges of the flower, all along the edges, and predominantly where the sun is going to be. And you can certainly add more as this dries if you feel like it turns too dark on you, but it will turn darker as it dries. I'll put a little bit of yellow in a minute, but right now I'm just gonna be adding my red. I'm adding some red in my, um, in my petals. This is going to make them almost look like they're see-through, but I don't want to add red on every single one of them. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of strategically picking a few and adding little bits of red here and there. I know that again, it's going to dry darker than it is when it's wet. So I'm not adding a ton onto it. I just want to get some sort of sense of the red in there. And then you can certainly you know, add a little bit on this backside, but you don't want to add too much because this backside is intended to be shadowed. I'm going to add, because this is really close to the sun, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in here as well. The yellow is almost going to be my highlight color for the red. So I'm not going to use too much of it and I'm not going to use it on all of my flowers, but definitely some of the ones that are closest to my where my sun is going to be. So I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm going to tackle all of these flowers in a similar way. When I add this little red to the edges, I'm going past where my black was. So that will allow it to have an even brighter look to it if you go past some of that black a little bit. I'm going to be adding a bunch of red over on the area where I know it's gonna be closest to the sun, which is gonna be in through here. So these are these petals are gonna get a ton of red on them and you can even go past that, um, that black uh, footprint if you want to. And again, you don't have to add it to all of them. You can just add it to as many as you want. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of yellow to the edges of this one because I know it is pretty close to the, to the sun, but I wanna make sure that I have that um, little speckled look to it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some red to this one. So this one is up above the sun. So I don't need to add a whole lot, but I do want to get some red in here so you can see some color to it. So I'm not going to add as much and I'm not going to go as far out past the edge of this black and that's going to allow it to look a little bit darker as it dries than, um, than these ones down in through here. And same thing in these petals. As I'm adding a little bit of red here and there, I don't have much red on my brush. So the less paint I have on my brush, the 
darker it will dry with that black on it. I can add a lot to this one because this one's going to be facing the sun. So anyone that is, any petal that is kind of facing the sun could certainly get a little extra boost of red. So you can certainly have fun with that one. I'm not going to add any yellow to that one. I'm going to go ahead and do this one. So again, my sun is going to be to the left of this flower. So I'm going to add the most of this red over here on the left of the top of the flower. And then I'm going to just kind of dot it back into the darkness. Again, I don't need to go all the way and it will get darker as it goes. And then maybe a little bit of red within some of these petals as if maybe they're catching a little bit of that sunshine. Again, I don't need to do all of them just kind of doing a little a little swipe here and there. I think this one got a little aggressive, but that's okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this one is at, you know, kind of level with the sun. So this one could be pretty, pretty uh, bright along these edges. I might add a little bit of yellow to this one as it really seems to be facing the sun to me. And again, it's going to dry darker. So as you're going through your process, if when it dries, if it's not vibrant enough for you, add another layer. Adding another layer of the red on top of the red will make it brighter because it makes it less um, translucent the more layers that you have on top of it. Oh, maybe I think I wanted to add a little bit of yellow to this one while I'm here. I just picked up a little bit of yellow, get this edge to be just a little bit brighter. And then I wipe my brush off, picking up some of that red to get the edges of this. And again, I'm really concentrating on getting the red on the side of the, the sun. So my sun is over here to the left. So that's where I'm concentrating on getting this red in the flower top. This conglomerate information here, I'm just going to kind of add little streaks of red here and there, but I don't really need to do much. We're going to call it all in the shadow over there. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and get the, the left edge of this flower in through here with a little bit of this red on it. And if you're going about this and you're like, oh my God, my red totally took over and I can't see any dimension within my flower, you can certainly pick up pick the black back up and add little dots within the red. You can put little black spots in through there and that will bring some of that dimension right back. So don't feel as if if you went too far that there's no turning back because you can always you can always come back with a little bit of the um, of the black. I just put a little bit of yellow on my brush because I feel like I want these tips to be a little bit more exciting. So yellow is my color that is gonna make them a little bit more exciting for me. <laughs> Add that yellow with a little bit of red, that totally does it. And then I just had this little guy down here. And then we will be using this same brush for the next step. So I do recommend on this step that you let it dry for a minute before you say that you're done because that red, again, sometimes has a tendency of changing quite a bit, especially when you're on that dark background. So let it dry for a minute. See if you want to do a second coat to any of your petals or, or, your, um, or the top. And if you do, feel free to go ahead and do that. And then when you're ready, you can wash and dry the brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting our sun. So I'm having mine right in through here. I definitely recommend that your paint around this area is nice and dry because we're going to be, you know, painting over it and pulling the paint and all that good stuff. So I'm using my small brush. I'm going to be using white, yellow, and red. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to have this interior area the brightest, and then I'm going to be pulling out beams of sunshine. So the best tip I can give you for this is less is more. You do not need a lot of paint on your brush. You can even use a tiny bit of water on your on your brush that will allow you to pull out these nice kind of fluid um, beams. So I'm going to start with a tiny bit of white paint on my brush, so much so I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel and I'm going to decide where I want this central area to be and I'm going to have mine right in through here. And I'm not going to be using a lot of paint because I want it to kind of dry on the fly too. So that way, if it's not bright enough or if it's not in the right position, I can kind of, it'll dry fast and I can keep, I can just keep building layers. But if I add a ton of paint, 
it's going to stay wet and I won't be able to um, build layers and modify it. So now that I've got my kind of my central location in there, I'm picking up a little bit more white paint and I'm going to start pulling my beams of light out wherever I want them to be. I'm just having them go like through these two petals and just kind of splay out. But you could certainly, you know, have fun with yours, make them go wherever you want them to. It's just, uh, this is just what I saw. <laughs> so this is what you get in the painting. And I'm pulling them from the, the center of the, um, of what my sun is. And they can come out in like a starburst kind of effect. Right now I am just using my white paint, but you could certainly um, be using the yellow at this point if you wanted to. But now that I've kind of got it where I want it, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm adding a little bit of yellow and red to like the exteriors of these beams. So that's going to, in essence, kind of make that center part glow more. So I'm adding a touch of water on my brush. I just kind of dipped it in my water. I'm picking up a teeny tiny bit of yellow and a teeny tiny bit of red. And then I'm just gonna kind of dab that on my paper towel, maybe add a little bit more water to my brush so I can, in essence, kind of go out in the exterior parts. I want a little more red. I wanna be able to see this red a little bit more. Um, the exterior parts of these beams of light and add a little bit of that color to them. And again, what's gonna happen is if you have a little bit of color in the exterior part of these beams of light, it will make that center part look even brighter. So if you have white next to white, that's not always gonna look that bright. That white in the center won't look as bright as it can, but if you give it a little bit of contrast around the edges, I just added more white to my brush to get this center to start to um, be a little bit more dominant. So I put a little bit more white on my brush and I went back to that center area and can start to pull it out a little bit more. So the, the center sp spray of um, beams of light is a little bit more concentrated and white in the center and then it will um, get more yellow and red as it goes towards the exterior of those beams of light. And of course, this is one of those steps that you may find yourself kind of tweaking and just enjoying the process. If it goes wrong and you're like, oh my God, that's like too yellow or too red, just give it a minute, let it dry, and then just come back and kind of add whatever you want on top of it. Or even, you know, you can go back and, and put that that pedal back on top and start all over again. So you don't feel like you ever, you know, if you do something that you weren't expecting, don't feel like you can't fix it. It's always fixable in the world of acrylic. <laughs> so just know that, you know, give yourself some, some confidence with it's okay to make mistakes. I make mistakes. We all make mistakes or we make it. So it's not exactly as we thought it would be. <laughs> so, and I just know that you can always go back and, you know, make your little modifications. So feel free to keep tweaking this as much as you want. And then once you've got it all nice and done, we are going to use this small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going bottom left, small brush, black paint. I do my initials, but you could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourselves some pretty flowers and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.